Right. Russ, it's uh, great to have you on the podcast today. How are you doing? Adam, I'm doing fantastic. Great to see you, brother. No, you too. It's, it's great to connect with you and have you on. And I just kind of thought I'd introduce you and, you know, get into like, you know, what, what you do, how you got into it, because you're the uh, CEO and owner of Peak Performance Coaching. And, you know, you're very heavily involved in, you know, the personal development realm, speaking, you've got a few books, um, you know, and you help people to develop in their business and in their health. How do you kind of, you know, get into this, um, you know, field? Yeah, definitely, Adam. So, I mean, it goes back to my childhood, really. You know, I, I grew up, I'm 6'6", six, six, so I'm a tall guy. And I grew, I don't know what that is in uh, in uh, metric system, but it's it's uh, it's tall. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and so, you know, I managed to grow up tall, lanky, buck tooth, you know, awkward, but also chubby at the same time. You know, I had the, the spare tire, you know, as we call it here around my stomach, and I hated it. Um, you know, I remember going to the pool, all my friends seemed to have the flat stomach, the abs, and I was jealous, you know, I, I, I took my shirt off and, you know, I don't think they were trying to be mean, but they teased me and, um, you know, it just really bothered me. And then I remember a specific incident. Sometimes I can't remember what I did five minutes ago, but I remember being 11 years old. I was 10 or 11, I think I was 11. And my dad had gotten a new VHS camera for you, you guys that are old enough to remember the big boxy, you know, VHS yeah. cameras and he was doing home movies and he said, Russ, introduce yourself. And I said, my name's Russ. I was a shy kid. I'm not shy anymore, but I was a shy kid. I like uh, soccer. I like basketball. I like my dog, Rudy. And then I looked down and paused. And I said, I'm fat. You know, my mom and dad both look at each other, don't know what to say. Finally, my mom breaks the silence with seven words that really changed the direction of my life forever. She said, Russ, you're not fat. You're just husky. And she said that because going back to school shopping, I had to get the husky pants. And I hated that word. They might as well just call them the fat pants. And, you know, it was like something lit a fire in me. I was like, you know what? I'm going to figure out how to get rid of this spare tire, this fat. And, you know, I loved wrestling, WWF wrestling, you know, the muscly guys that were all ripped. I said, I'm going to figure out how to look like those guys. And I started running. I just went outside and started running. And I didn't know uh, what I was doing. I loved to eat then. I still love to eat now. We'll probably get into that. I'm very transparent about that. And then... Um, you know, I realized it's a good lesson that, you know, cardio, and we see it today, so many people do cardio, 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 and they don't get the body they want, and they're frustrated, and cardio is a, there, there is a benefit to doing cardiovascular, cardiovascular exercise, but it's not the best thing to do if you really want to transform your body permanently. I started lifting weights in my late teens, early 20s, and realized now that that is one of the keys uh, to getting lean and staying lean. We can talk about that if you want to. And, you know, I had some pretty good success on my own, but just like a lot of us, I went to, uh, went to, went to college or, or university, I think you guys call it. And, and I, um, you know, got into uh, accounting just because it kind of made sense for me. I could do it. A lot of my friends were doing it. I said, Hey, if you can do into accounting, you can have a great job. So that's how I picked my career, my first career. And I'm working for one of the big firms, uh, you know, working long hours, late nights, you know, we had the corporate account. So we're, you were going out on corporate business dinners. You know, I'm in my 20s. I'm drinking and partying with my friends and coworkers, and I'm working out regularly. But still, I'm at 27 years old. I'm like, I, st I never reached my goal. I said, I want to be the guy with the abs and I never did it. Damn it. I'm going to do it now. And so I made a decision and a true commitment, which is something I've learned in life. That's when things change, when people get to a point where they're, there's no other option but to change. They're burning the bridges you know, burning the boat, so to speak. And so I hired a coach. I said, I want to do this the right way. I hired an online coach. Uh, at the time, he was the top natural bodybuilder in the world. And I entered a, in an international physique transformation contest. So I'm going to do this fast. I'm going to do it right. So it's a 12 week deal. I said, look, Skip, I want to win the contest. I'll do whatever you say. Uh, I did everything he asked. And in 12 weeks, took my body fat percentage from around 25%, you know, chubby 25%, not obese, but, but chubby. Uh, to 5%, which is like, you know, for people who don't know, that's like stage ready uh, condition for, you know, a bodybuilding competition and literally changed my life. I was like, this is amazing. I love the process. I love being fit and healthy. Uh, people that work in, in at the gym obviously noticed. They said, what are you doing, man? Can you do it for me? And I started helping people. I got certified as a trainer, uh, did it part time for a while. And then finally, a few years later, got the courage uh, to quit my full-time, you know, safe uh, accounting job. And for the past, this was 2006. Uh, so yeah, the past 15 years 
have been, uh, you know, helped tens of thousands of people get the physical, mental, emotional health uh, that they need, you know, want a lot of them, but you really, you know, it's not an option. I work with a lot of business owners, a lot of executives, like it is not, I, I help them see it's not optional. Like you are your biggest asset and taking care of that asset is critical to run your business and to run your household. So that's how I got into it, bro. No, that's, that's awesome, Russ. And I think it's it's great how, you know, you've been able to, you know, shift and change your life and, you know, your mindset, especially when, you know, like when you're in that place where you might not be kind of where you want to be, if that makes sense. And you're struggling, you know, like growing up, it, it, it's difficult, isn't it? And, you know, just people can get caught up into, you know, life and, um, kind of almost not think about their, you know, their health, they get sidetracked in work and everything else. And, you know, you know, I really think it's rewarding what you're doing and how you've been able to shift that and, you know, make a difference in people's lives. So I think, like, as you mentioned before, you know, like it shouldn't be something that is optional to do, you know, like your health. It's, it's like, it should be mandatory that it's something you do anyway. And, it links into so many areas. And as you said before, like, you know, people working in business and um, people who are trying, you know, have to be on their best mark all the time. If, if you're, like you said, if your help isn't there, then it's going to leak into all these other areas. And um, like, where, where do you kind of like start with clients? Like where the, where's the kind of like base point of, um, you know, someone trying to develop themselves? Do you, where, where do you think it's the best place? Yeah, dude. First of all, it's so true, man. I mean, and, and you know, it's like the old, the old saying, uh, you know, the man with his health has a million wishes. The man without his health has one wish, right, to get his health back. And you know, again, it affects everything. I mean, we get one body, um, and, and if you don't take care of it, you know, you can get away with it for a while because our bodies are resilient. But it's you're going to get punished, uh, you know, one day, uh, you know, later, if not sooner. And so in terms of, I think you're asking in the best place for people to start, is that what you're, you're asking? Yeah. Like say you have clients who come to you and they, they, they want help in a specific area. Like how do you kind of like um, start out in that? If they, if they're wanting to, I don't know, do you, do you do like an assessment? Like if they want to lose oh, weight? Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So, so either myself or one of my coaches, you know, talk to them. So I have two personal training studios in Atlanta. I have, uh, you know, 14 uh, coaches. Uh, you know, fitness coaches that work with me now at this point. And then we also, we, so, you know, those clients will come into the studio and work. Uh, I do also do online coaching with guys uh, and girls all over the world. Uh, we're in, I think, seven countries and, and 15 states. And then last year we were doing this on a small basis, but last year when everything shut down with COVID, you know, we had to come up, we got shut down, right? Gyms were one of the first thing. And so we said, well, we got to come up with a solution. We're not just going to uh, number, we're not going to let our clients down and we're not going to let our business die. So we uh, started testing on uh, just like this, Adam, you and I zoom one-on-one -on -one personal training and our clients really, it, it, it didn't only work as a temporary solution. Like we had to do it. We realized some clients actually preferred it because guess what? They can roll out of bed and go straight to their workout. They don't have to even drive to the studio. They can do it from the comfort of their own home. Uh, some of our, you know, some people have home gyms, some, a little bit of equipment, but we, you know, a lot of people don't, a lot of our clients didn't have any equipment. So we had to figure out how to give extremely effective workouts with zero equipment. And I don't like to use the word mastered, but we pretty much mastered that. And what has happened is, is uh, this online one-on-one -on -one training has really grown. So we've got, we're working with people again and in Miami and LA and Houston, Ohio, uh, New York and the UK, um, you know, we're uh, going to get a new client in uh, Thailand. So it's pretty cool. I mean, last year was, was brutal for so many people. Um, but, um, you know, there's, there's always, I believe, a silver lining if, if you look for it and look for the opportunity. So to answer your question, if they're coming into the studio, then they're going to do a full on uh, fitness. First, we're going to have a conversation with them. Hey, what, what do you want to do? Uh, what are your goals? You know, what's important to you? What have you tried in the past? You know, and, and really set those expect expectations because I'm in the business, me and my team are in the business of body, life and health transformation, not in making you sweat, you know, because you can go sweat and, and work out and, you know, maybe eat a little healthier for a little while. I want to work with people 
who, just like I did at 27, want to transform their lives. And that doesn't necessarily mean getting 5% body fat and, and, you know, seeing their abs. Most of our clients don't want to do that, you know, and that, that, and they probably shouldn't. Uh, that's pretty extreme. But whatever that transformation is for them, we want to make sure that we know what that is. We identify it. Um, we, you know, we help them understand, hey, here's realistically what it's going to take and then make sure they're committed to, to doing that. Because if they're not, it's a waste of time on, on both ends. And then we'll have them come in, uh, do a full fitness assessment, uh, which includes we have a 3D body scanner that's really cool. Uh, they'll come in, you know, it, they'll, you know, it scans their body, it takes about 60 seconds, uh, you know, uh, measures their body fat percentage, does all their measurements. And then on the big screen show, this is private, of course, shows a, th oh, identifies any potential health risk, which is super important. And then it shows a 3D scan of their body, which is a little weird to see at first, uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's not, not good or bad. But then every eight weeks, we're doing that test again, along with a lot of other tests, and they can see the physical changes in their body. So we'll do a functional, you know, training uh, test, you know, doing, you know, things like overhead squats, you know, push-up assessment, you know, mobility assessment. Um, and then if we're do so that's in studio, if it's online, the process is going to be very similar, um, except, you know, in Zoom, the assessment process is going to be a little bit different. And then at that point, you know, we'll, if we believe we can help the person sincerely, we believe they're committed to making change, we'll make a professional you know, recommendation of what it's going to take to get there. And if, you know, they choose to work with us and we choose to work with them, then we put that in place and then create a truly uh, and this is one of the things that's, you know, different about us is, is a truly customized plan. We're one of the few places that do one-on-one -on -one. and we do offer group training. We do offer uh, small group, semi-private. Again, I do coaching where I have my body transformation university that people can go through and then use, you know, me or one of my coaches for mentoring questions, you know, for people who more want to do it on their own. They don't necessarily want to have somebody face-to-face -face or, or maybe can't afford that. Uh, but what I found is, is our, our bread and butter and, you know, is, is the one, on, and what people really want is that one-on-one -on -one attention. And we're one of the few places that do it because it's not as profitable, right? It's more profitable to get, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 people in a group, have them all doing the same thing, you know, which again, you're, you're sweating, you're moving. It's better than doing nothing uh, as long as you don't get hurt, uh, right? So we really focus on that one-on-one, -on -one, that customization, you know, making sure the plan is designed specifically for that client, their needs, their goals, any injuries that they have. You know, a lot of our clients are in their 40s, 50s, 60s. And, you know, I can speak from personal experience. You know, you know, we typically have imbalances that happen. I, I have arthritis, you know, myself pretty or very significant in my hips. Um, so that's that's kind of the process. Yeah, no, I, I really I really think it's great how you've been able to you know adapt in this time. Uh, with COVID because I think, you know, a lot of businesses have struggled, a lot of businesses have thrived and is that silver lining to it. And I think, as you mentioned, you can't, it's just about adapting and pivoting and kind of improvising. And, you know, like you said, with the Zoom and uh, virtual calls and all of this, you, you mentioned before, like the one-on-one -on -one and how people can do it from home. And that is very concentrated and it's very, it's kind of intimate, isn't it? You know, you're kind of focused, you're getting that person's attention. It's not like you're in a class of 20 people and you, you're trying to dis distribute that attention. you got that one-to-one -one and there's that, they're in that zone and, you know, they're, they, they're committed to it. And I think that's one of the great things is the technology and what you've been able to do is that people can get out of the bed and they can do it in the room or in the living room or in their private gym and, you know, create this, um, this change. And I think like... Would you say like with fitness, I mean, I think sometimes people, I mean, I've heard it before, um, they want results quick. They want it now, you know, and they, they sometimes put people put pressure on themselves to get X, Y, Z results, you know, in a space of time. Do you think that it's important that people kind of, you know, have high expectations, but have that kind of uh, approach to it that it's going to take time and all of this and it all kind of, you know, it's gradual. Yeah, it's a, it's a great point, Adam. I mean, yeah, we're in a society where people want instant, <laughs> instant results. Yeah. Right? That's why, you know, all these, you know, lose 10 pounds in seven days, you know, diets and all that kind of stuff is super popular. And it's, it's funny, you know, I have a, a 30 day uh, body transformation kickstart program. Yeah. And you know, I have mixed feelings on it because, you know, yes, in 30 days, if you, 
you know, are serious, you come in, you do things right, you can see some significant change, but yeah. you got to keep doing it. But the problem is if I advertised a, you know, for the rest of your life, you know, find a sensible eating plan, exercise consistently, and this is going to be yeah. one of the best things you can do for you. Nobody's getting excited about that. <laughs> so I track them with that 30 days and then yeah. help them get results quickly. I do believe that's important because if people yeah. don't get results quickly, um, then, they're, then they're likely to get discouraged. So I'm a big believer in mm. making it a lifestyle, right? Mm. Finding a plan that can be sustainable so that you can be healthy and fit for the rest, rest of your life and get mm. those benefits, but also to always have short-term goals. Because, because if your only goal is to be healthy and fit for life, there's no urgency and it's not exciting, right? Mm. So if you can always, if you, but if you could have that as in the back of your mind, but always be setting, you know, short-term, mid-term goals, you know, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, having something to get excited about. If you can combine mm -hmm. those two, that's what I found works best for me personally and, and for my clients. Yeah. No, I think that's a great point. And I think like you say, like the 30 day, um, like, um, time frame. I mean, that's a good time frame. I think because it takes around, I think that time to develop a habit, you know, to, like, a, like a good solid habit. It takes, I think at least like 30 days or however many weeks. So I think it's, yeah, it's about a month, isn't it? It's about, yeah, 30 days to develop a habit. So if the person goes into that, then they're in that habit over that time of just kind of getting in it and doing it. So it's kind of, it's a good benchmark as well. Um, like when, when you kind so of... I've heard the 30-day thing and I've heard 15 mm -hmm. days. You know, what I've found in the past 20 years, my experience with, with fitness is, you know, really I tell people, you're, the good news, you're one workout away from a better mood. You get a great workout in, you know, man, I mean, your mindset's better, your energy's better, your confidence is better. So that's pretty cool. Uh, three months away from a body transformation, depending on, you know, where you are. But you, if, you, if you come in, you do the right things for you in three months, you can see and feel a very significant change. But it's about six months that I found when not only you can get the physical changes and literally, regardless of where you are getting the best shape of your life, six months is, is enough time when you do it the right way. But at that point, it, I don't like to use the word automatic, but it, it, it becomes, it's really easier to become a lifestyle at that point because you've done it long enough, you've done it consistent, you've seen and felt the results. Not that it's impossible to fall back in your old ways because it can happen, but if you can do it consistently for six yeah. months, uh, then it almost becomes like brushing your teeth. It's just kind of, kind of what you do at that point. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. And, you know, it, it just becomes a lot automatic for people once they're, you know, just doing it and doing it and doing it. And um, I, I sometimes think as well, that's kind of like be like a deeper purpose behind it, isn't it? Like there's got to be like that kind of, you know, why are you doing, why are you wanting to work out? You know, like I've seen some people in the gyms, you know, and they take, they, they work out for 10 minutes and they take a picture in the mirror and I'm like, that you you know, or they're on the phone and I'm like, you know, just it's that discipline, isn't it? And there's got to be a deeper reason why people want to get, to get fit, you know, like that, that driving force behind it. If you, I think some people probably do it to impress other people. Um, I mean, everyone's different. I mean, everyone's got their own, their own choice, but I think ultimately if you're going to stay in it and keep and keep on doing it, there's got to be some kind of driving force behind that. Like for like, for you, when you went through it and you, you, you complete, you are uh, one, uh, the international physique contest. I mean, that must have been like difficult. And, you know, how many people was you up against when you was doing that contest? Um, I don't know exactly. I mean, it was thousands of people all over the world. So it was, yeah. it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, and well, to your point, you're right. That's one thing that I, I talk with my clients a lot about is, is your why. Like, yeah. you know, we, 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 you know what, why is this important to you? Because life's going to throw curveballs at you. It's going to punch you in the face. There's going to be times it's inconvenient, you know, to follow through on what you committed to. And you, that's when you've got to go back to connect to that, that reason why. And it, you said it, it's different for everybody. And for me in the beginning is I want to be ripped, man. I want to have abs. You know, I want to get attention. I want to, you know, get the girls, all that stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, now, now yeah. I'm 46. You know, I'm married to the woman of my dreams. I have three yeah. kids, I run three businesses. Like, my, you know, I got after I won that contest, I get into natural bodybuilding. And you know, that's a, it's a, a very disciplined sport. I mean, it's, it's a full-time job. You know, you're eating every two hours, you're working out, you know, six days a week, so you're doing, you know, two a day workouts, lots of times, you just have to be so meticulous on everything. And for that, you know, a period of that season of my life, it served me. But now my life, it, you know, can't revolve around working out And most of my, my clients, you know, they, they have 
full-time jobs, they have businesses to run, they have kids. And so my mission over the past, you know, five to seven years has been, okay, how can I, can I, I still want to look good. I like having, you know, I, one of my claim to fame is I keep visible abs 365 days a year. Uh, I'm proud of that. Uh, you know, but most important for me is having the energy, the vitality um, to go out and, and be the best I can for my clients, you know, for my mm-hmm. employees, for my vendors, and especially for my family and to mm-hmm. live as long as, as possible, you know, God yeah. willing. Um, and so, and I love to eat and to be able to eat the foods that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I've really, you know, figured out, okay, and, and it is possible that I can have the health energy body I want, still enjoy foods that I like within, you know, the realm of, of reason. You can't eat as much as you want of anything you want. If somebody inv- invents that diet that's successful, they'll be uh, a trillionaire. I don't think it'll ever happen. But, uh, you know, that's being able to do that and working out, you know, three to four times a week but being really consistent and focusing on the right things. And so my why now is my, you know, my, my family, my business, my health, uh, and my legacy. So your why can change and probably will change over time. And that's okay, but you nailed it, man. You got to have that, that driving force. Uh, otherwise it's too easy to get distracted. Yeah, no, that's, it's so important, isn't it? And, you know, I think it's, you know, I really, I really commend you for what you're doing and, um, you know that you you're looking after yourself and i think it's you know by what you're doing you know you you made those changes in your life and you just want to give and provide value to other people and help them to do the same because i think when you've when you've been in a certain place you can identify with other people because you know you can see you know you can see ourselves in other people because we was probably there once or we were going through those those difficulties so it must be rewarding you know seeing people shift and change and grow and develop through, you know, your program and, uh, you know, what, what you, what you have established. It's so rewarding. I just posted a, uh, you know, success story that, uh, from Gab, one of my clients who lives in Alberta that does coaching with me. And you know, it was cool. We have, you know, I have a private coaching group and fa- on Facebook and, you know, I didn't even ask him to do this. He just posted, it was really, really long and, you know, showed his, his before and after pictures, which were amazing, but just the, you know, you see that, and you see that a lot, you know, you'll see these before and after pictures, which is cool. The physical changes are cool, but just as cool or maybe cooler and, and rewarding to me is the, the journey, the story that went, he went through, you know, the personal, uh, you know, emotional, mental growth. And he had some some major, major challenges um, along the way. But instead of letting that derail him and giving him an excuse to retreat, he used that as an excuse to lean in and get even more committed to something he could control, which was his physical body. And that's something that, you know, I've been through challenges in my life, just like, you know, anybody has in, you know, fitness has been the one thing that, you know, when things are tough, I lean into it, man, because I know that I can't, I can't control everything, but I can control to a certain degree, how my body looks, how I feel, my health, uh, my confidence, you know, and, and my energy. Yeah, no, I say exactly. And I think, you know, for, you know, for people to, to change and to, to grow and to see those changes is rewarding. And like you said, it's um, looking at what, you know, you're, what you're in control of, you know, your, your energy, your health and your body and your mindset. Um, it's definitely key. And I think people, would, would you say you've seen... Um, you know, since COVID, people kind of thinking more about their health and their well-being. Would you say? Would you say you've seen a shift or, or any? I mean, some, but not enough. Yeah, yeah. Some, but yeah. not enough. I mean, it's it's crazy, man. I mean, you know, nobody knew, really knew what was going on when when this thing happened. And then, you know, I was, you know, definitely had a, a period of time when I was like, oh my gosh, is 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 my business yeah. be dead? Are we are we done? I was never worried about you know, really getting sick because I, you know, knew that having a str- I know that having a strong immune system, being healthy um, is a big, um, uh, one of the biggest factors in how any virus or any, any illness affects you. Not that anybody's invincible, but I mean, I've seen, man, I mean, I've, I've got some friends my age in their forties, people mm-hmm. I know in their fifties that have, have died of COVID and it's so sad and, yeah. and heartbreaking. Um, and so we've got, like, we know, you know, taking care of your health, taking care of your level of fitness, maintaining yeah. a good body weight helps prevent, you know, lots certain types of cancers, most types of cancers, you know, heart disease, diabetes, all that bad stuff we don't want to get. But now yeah. there's literally 
um, you know, something that, you know, the difference between life and death, or at least how you handle th this virus, um, you know, your immune system and your, your health plays a huge role. So um, it's, it's, it's important, man. And, and some yeah. people are, but, you know, I think too many people are, are not, um, you know, still not, yeah. not taking that action, you know, yeah. doing all the other things, you know, that can help, you know, maybe spread the, the, uh, you know, the spread the, uh, help prevent yeah. the spread of COVID, but yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's still, it's a short-term bandaid. It's not yeah. solving the, the true problem. Yeah. I think what you mentioned, like, it is very sad that, you know, people pass from it. Um, but I think you said ultimately, you know, trying to look after your health and your well-being and your immune system. And it makes me think about my granddad. Because my granddad caught COVID and he's 76 and he, and he's fine. You know, luckily he's fine. And Glad to hear that. He, yeah. yeah. And in, he, he like goes for walks. He looks after himself. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, you know, your immune system, isn't it? And how you look after your body. Um <clears throat> I think, you know, if you're stressed as well, people are stressed out, then, you know, that, that must, you know, affect the immune system as well. Um, Dude, I don't um, want to cut you off, but that that's so important, what you just yeah. said. Like the, the physical and, you know, health is important, but there's some, there's, you know, something called epigenetics. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's the study of, okay, so you've got, we've all got our genetics, right? You know, that come down from our parents some are good, some are bad. You got what you got. You know, I say, don't complain, be grateful for what you got. It's like the, 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 you know, the skinny guy wants to have the muscles, you know, the, the guy that's, you know, has a harder yeah. time losing fat wants to be skinny. The girl with, you know, no hips wants hips. The girl with hips wants to, right. Well, be grateful yeah. for what you got. But there's a study that shows epigenetics that lifestyle choices, positive lifestyle choices can actually trump your genetics, literally bad genes can be turned off negative genes and the positive genes can be kept on uh, through lifestyle choices, which, you know, obviously exercise nutrition, but the biggest factor is, uh, is your, is your stress. So mm -hmm. yeah, you can have a, you know, quote unquote, perfect body, whatever that means you can exercise, you can eat right. But if you are stressed, your, your immune system is, is down and you're open to, um, to, to illness and disease and being affected more. So it's, it's critical, man. And, and people are more stressed now, uh, probably than ever. And mm -hmm. it's a, it's, it's a hard thing, but, you know, and I have some, some things that I do, um, you know, some breathing things, but, you know, mostly so just like keeping it in perspective, like I am mm -hmm. a very driven, you know, person. I want to, you know, make a huge impact in the world. You know, my mission is to help millions of people become the best version of themselves physically, mentally, and emotionally, so they can fulfill what they were put on earth to do. Uh, I have big dreams for my, you know, business. I want to continue to grow. I want to experience everything in life with my family. I'm very, very driven and, and a personality, but at the same time, I'm able to put things in perspective. Like if a <laughs> business deal falls through or something unexpected happens or, you know, having a challenge with my kids, like, okay, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to number one, steal my joy because we never know how much time we have left on this planet, but also, mm -hmm. It's not, I look at it, like if I start getting angry and stressed, I'll literally stop myself, take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, Russ, is this going to matter a year from now? Um, mm -hmm. The answer is almost always no. Is it going to matter a month from now? <laughs> is yeah. it going to matter a week from now? And if it's not going to matter a week from now, I'm like, let it go. And then I'll say, even if it is going to matter, is it worth your health? Is it worth your health to get angry? And is getting angry or getting stressed, is that going to change it? Well, of course not. And so really putting in th things in perspective, but man, that is stress is stress is a killer, dude. And it's a big problem. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I, I really think, you know, what you mentioned there is like really, uh, really strong points. And, you know, uh, it's, it's managing that stress, isn't it? And, and finding your way of dealing with it. Um, and I think, like you said, taking a, a deep breath and, and, and taking a, like a, like a third person perspective and asking yourself those questions is this going to matter in a year or, you know, these kind of things, it really does kind of put like, you know, that, that uh, magnifying glass on top of it and makes you, you know, it, it, it sees, you see it for what it is and if it really matters, if it doesn't, I mean, that's a great way, a great way of you know, neutralizing, you know, um, frustration or like, you know, stress. Cause I think sometimes, you know, we we're only human, aren't we? We can get ticked off by small things sometimes and, you know, evaluating and saying, is it really worth it? 
then I think that's a great way of uh, moving forward with it. And um, I was thinking as well, like, do you have any um, favorite books at all that you like to read or have read? I know you've got a few books that you've written yourself called, um, what's it here? Hold it. You've called them um, author Live Longer, Feel Better, and Look Great Naked. They're quite good titles. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. Obviously, I wrote it. Uh, but yeah, man, I have a, I mean, I'm a big reader, first of all. You know, leaders are readers, um, has been mm. said. I agree with that 100%. I listen mostly to audiobooks, you know, so yeah. you know, people that don't have time. Well, do it in your car. You know, do it when you're working out. You always have time if, if, you're, if you're creative enough. Uh, so yeah, you know, we talked about Grant, you know, Grant Cardone, one of my uh, biggest mentors, you know, before the, you know, we came on live and uh, so 10 X rule, you know, be obsessed or be average seller, be sold all of his books. I've read uh, yeah. one of the best in terms of uh, mindset and in terms of just making you um, better in all areas of your life by starting internally is psycho cybernetics. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's an old book, uh, but it's been around a long time. There's different versions. The newer version, the newest version is a little easier to, um, to, to, uh, to understand digest. and digest. Thank you. Um, but those are, those are some of my favorite, man. I mean, rich dad, poor dad, think and grow rich. Uh, some of the, you know, classics, um, you know, books. Mm -hmm. I mean, back in the day, Bill Phillips, uh, body for life. Um, you know, he, he helped, uh, thousands and thousands of people transform their bodies. So yeah, I love reading, man, but those are some that come to mind. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And I think it's some of those old books, isn't it? Uh, some of the best ones as well, like uh, Think and Grow Rich and, um, you know, like there, there some of those books I've written in the 20s, wasn't they? That, that other one you mentioned, I've never heard of, but like it's, they're, they're kind of way ahead of their time, wasn't it? Some of these books that were like printed and made. And yeah, I think Grant Cardone's a great, you know, great person to mention. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's fantastic at what, what he does and uh, what he's putting out there. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's important to look at books, isn't it? Look at the right kind of books to, you know, take, um, you know, advice from and to apply it to your life. Um, and I was thinking as well, like, do you have any, like, uh, you mentioned, like, mentors, but um, any uh, role models or mentors you um, kind of looked up to growing up or, like, even now? Yeah, but he, my whole life. I mean, again, when I was young, my dad was was my you know biggest mentor, and uh, you know, and loved wrestling. So Hulk Hogan, you know, back in the day, I don't know if he was a mentor, but I looked up to him. You know, Michael Jordan. You know, I was in that era. So these, you know, just athletes that were uh, you know elite. Um, in terms of of now, yeah, Grant, you know, Grant Cardone is is definitely you know helping me tremendously. Um, I work you know work with him. I work with his team. You know, Brandon Dawson. Uh, his partner on scaling my business. I have a one-on-one -on -one coach that me and my team work with, um, you know, on a regular basis every week. Um, I still use fitness coaches, personal trainers. I work with some of my trainers. You know, I work with other coaches, even though I know what to do. I, I don't need the accountability to do it, but a great coach, you know, you look at every top athlete, they have a coach so that they can get to a level that they could never get to on their own. So I'm a huge believer in coaches and mentors. I mean, Tony Robbins, you know, one of my, my biggest mentors in terms of, you know, mindset and, and state and, you know, overall mm -hmm. life success. So yeah, man, I mean, it's a big, obviously it's what I do for a living coaching yeah. industry, and I, I practice what I preach. I use, yeah. you know, have used and, and do use and will continue to use mentors, yeah. to help me, you know, get, again, get to a level that I couldn't get on my own and also to see things, you know, when you're in it, especially with, with your business, what's your business, your body your relationship, you know, you're so, down in the weeds that a third and you've yeah. got that attachment where you've got you know somebody that's a third party that can easily see um you know what you can't see from an unemotional standpoint yeah yeah that's the, they're really great points and really good you know great examples of mentors and role models and um i think like you said you can kind of get caught into what you're doing in the weeds or in the like the trenches and it's like if i haven't someone on a third party, you know, view kind of overseeing what you're doing, they can kind of highlight any like blind spots for you to kind of work on, isn't it? I think it, it's definitely important, um, you know, that we we have that in life, you know, to to grow um, and, and develop. And I was thinking, you know, any what advice would you give to people who are like, you know, trying to figure out what they're trying to do, like in life, if that makes sense? or trying to find their way or trying to 
you know, uh, get into, you know, uh, fitness as well? Yeah, it's a, that's a pretty deep question, um, you know, it, 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 but I think it's a good one because a lot of people, I believe, don't go, hey, what's my purpose? What's life really about? You know, yeah. what, what am I here for? Um, you know, I think that that's something you discover through life. And I think it change, it, it could change again, as you, yeah. you know, I'm a very different person than I was in my 20s and my 30s. And I know I'll be a different person in my, my you know, 50s, 60s. So again, yeah. it gets back to take care, make your health a priority. Because if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to fulfill what your destiny is. And I do believe that God gave each and every one of us a special gift and, and destiny to fulfill. So take care of your health. Um, take care of your, your mind. You know, read, mm-hmm. learn, continue to improve yourself. If mm-hmm. you're the same you know, person in your 50s and your 20s and, and you didn't grow at all, and unfortunately yeah, a lot yeah. of people are that way, um, you know, you're never going to reach your full potential. And mm-hmm. then to, you know, realize that where you are now is okay. And to be the best, even if you're not in a job you love, you know, you're not doing what you were put on earth to do. Like I remember when I was an accountant CPA, I knew this was what was, I was not put on earth to do. And I, it was easy for me to get bitter and say, you know, I don't, I don't really like this job. Once I get to do yeah. what I really want to do, I'm going to turn it on. I realize that's the wrong thinking. No, I'm going to be the friggin' best. Mm. At what I am now, I'm going to have a great attitude because guess what? having that great attitude, showing up and doing your best, even when you're not doing what maybe is your thing you were put on earth to do is going to develop that skill set of showing up being your best. So when you are doing what you were meant to do, you have that skill set, because otherwise, if you don't, you're not going to be ready uh, when when you have that opportunity. So Mm. um, Mm. yeah, man, those are the things I would say. And then to, you know, to, to make contacts, you know, reach people, um, and really ask yourself, like, you know, don't look at other people's lives and, and, and social media. I mean, do it. You can do it for for inspiration. I believe in looking for inspiration. But when you compare yourself to other people or think, oh, well, they're doing that. I should be doing that. No, like, what do you really want? What do you yeah. really want? And, and last thing I'll say on that is what comes natural to you that you don't even have to think about. And that's called unconscious competence. It's in mm. it something you're probably overlooking. It's what I call your superpower. Mm. And it's something that is so natural to you that you think, well, everybody's comes natural to everybody. Like for me at this point in my life, I can go eat pretty much anywhere and I don't have to count it. I don't have to think about it, but I know how many calories pretty much very close and how many macros even, which is just the type of calories, protein, carbs, and fat are in the food. And I it just, and then I just get what I need without even thinking about it. It's almost subconscious. And to me, it's like, well, yeah, that's just how it is. But I realize like most people don't even have no idea how many calories or anything. They don't even know what a macro nutrient is. So figuring yeah. out what your superpower is and then trying to find a way to, to use that to add value to the world. And that's a great you know place to, to start in terms of, hey, why you're here, what's your purpose, what should you be doing? But mm-hmm. regardless of where you are now, like be the best be the best, show up every day, give your best effort. So you develop that, that mental muscle, so to speak, um, that's going to carry you on to fulfill your destiny when you do find it. Mm. No, I, really, I love that. I love that, Russ. And I think like you mentioned before, um, the importance of, like you said, just showing up and just doing your best on your craft, whatever it is that, you know, you're doing, even if it's like, you know, a job that you don't want to do, do it your best. And you know, develop that that uh, that muscle and that that skill set for when you know you can then take that into other areas of your life and other things that you do. Like as you said, because it's, it's like if you're not, you know, if you don't establish that already, then it, you know you, you're not going to have it. It's just going to take that time. Whereas if you you have it already and you develop it and, and, and nurture it, that's kind of like you know what it's about. And yeah, no, really, really great advice. And I really appreciate you, uh, you know, for saying that. And um, I was thinking as that as well. Uh, where can people find you on, like, say, social media, website, um, and your and your books as well? Yes, yeah, so they can find my my book, "Live Longer, Feel Better, Look Great Naked" on Amazon. Uh, <laughs> my website is uh, where you can find pretty much anything: russyager.com, uh, which is r u s s y e a g e r dot com. I'm on you know Facebook, Instagram, uh, Clubhouse now. Addicted uh, to that. <laughs> and so, so they, they can find me pretty much on any social all under my name spelled like i just spelled it yeah no that's great no that's awesome um 
but no, Russ, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the podcast and you know, I really appreciate you coming on and your time and you know, talking about the subjects that we have. And I, you know, I wish you continued success in what you're doing. I think, you know, you're doing great in what you're doing and, you know, helping other people in their lives and their health. And yeah, I think, you know, it's great what you're doing. I wish you all the best. I appreciate that, Adam. I'm, I'm on a mission, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help as many people as I can get their health right. And I uh, really enjoyed talking with you, brother. No, I really appreciate it, Russ. All the best, man. Cheers, Bob. Cheers.